Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney. I'm at Myrick O'Connell. We have offices. We have a lot of a lot of people here. We have about 20 people here in Westboro. But this show is not about elder law. It's about my friends Frank and Mary uh, and their goal in life, which is to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if they're in Westboro, that means they want to stay here. They don't want to move far away. And so the point of this show is to allow you, if you identify with these goal, this goal, um, to know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Westboro happily ever after. And with me is my great co-host, Shelby Marshall, who has th in charge of finding all of these great people locally uh, or from other places who are doing things locally that can help you do all of those things. So Shelby, we've got some great guests today. I know that you're very excited about this program. Once again, a program just opening up, I think, in Westboro. So who have we got and what are we talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Good morning, Arthur. Great to see you again, as always. Um, very excited about today's guests. Um, we have Dennis Lipka, who's the administrator of the uh, Regional Transit Authority. Um, he'll speak to us first. And we have um, Gabrielle McKaig from uh, VIA, which is a um, brand new program. Um, both the RTA and VIA are collaborating with the town of Westboro to bring this amazing on-demand transportation program to us. Frank and Mary are going to love it. I guarantee it. It's affordable, it's effective, it's efficient, and it's going to get them to and from where they need to go safely. So with that, uh, Dennis, welcome to the show. And um, tell us uh, uh, how VIA came to be in Westboro, please. Thank you very much. Uh, really happy to be here. And we're very excited about the VIA WRTA partnership. Um, for a long time, uh, the WRTA has had some type of fixed route shuttle service in Westboro, and it started off with some success, but as time went by, it, it just uh, essentially was not as not the service that was best for the town of Westboro. Um, uh, about a year ago, um, I met VIA for the first time, and uh, we started right away. It was a, a, a good partnership. Uh, um, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Mass Department of Transportation, was encouraging regional transit authorities to do different types of partnerships for transportation solutions. VIA is a national, an international company, uh, privately held, that's been tremendously successful in a number of different uh, municipal cities and regions uh, in the United States and throughout the world. And it was a, a match kind of made in heaven. And uh, we, we took a look at all 37 communities in uh, the Worcester Regional Transit Authority area and the best fit for a, a pilot, let's give this a try, was Westboro. Uh, we had, we, had uh, we could refocus the uh, shuttle assets elsewhere to do something else. Um, and I made a commitment to the uh, administration in Westboro that we would not pull the shuttle service until we had something locked in uh, with VIA uh, or some other service. Uh, we applied for a grant through at, with Mass DOT, uh, the Division of Rail and Transit, the discretionary grants for regional transit authorities, and received the largest grant in fiscal 20 to implement and start the WRTA VIA shuttle service in Westboro. And the program essentially is a dynamic on-demand system. Uh, VIA specializes in being able to modify the service to match up with the demand and the needs uh, that the community has, which is something that typical regional fixed route transit has not been very good at. Um, and um, the VIA people were very excited to come out here. Uh, we received again, the grant from MassDOT we added some additional funds from Mass DOT through CMAC, uh, which is the uh, air quality and uh, mitigation component of uh, DEP slash Mass DOT efforts. I love all the acronyms. I know it. I, <laughs> I, I, I haven't even got rolling yet. Uh, they, they, but, to, but the idea was that we're also working to minimize congestion and to improve people's options for transit. This is a community-wide grant available to all the residents of Westboro. We drew, uh, uh, Gabby will talk to you about the service area, but we tried to incorporate 
a little some of some of the areas a little beyond. We've incorporated uh, some shopping opportunities in Northboro. Uh, we've incorporated both the MBTA stations in West Westboro and Southboro. We have an aggressive fare uh, 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 policy that's going to encourage people to try this out. And if they do, in fact, use it, it's going to be very economical and it'll run uh, uh, Monday through Friday. All that said, I want to turn it over to Gabby, who's going to help you understand a little bit about VIA and the details of how the service operates. Great. Welcome, Gabby, from VIA. Welcome, Gabby. Thanks, guys. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Um, we're very, very, very excited about this project. Um, I think, a as mentioned, you know, what what VIA really is, is, is we are, um, as we like to describe ourselves, uh, a public mobility company. So we build technology uh, and in some cases also operate services uh, all over the world, um, I think on pretty much every continent except Antarctica at the moment. <laughs> Uh, and it's all about improving um, sort of equity and access in transportation to folks. So, um, you know, if you think a little bit about sort of uh, conventional fixed route uh, bus service, you've got to kind of walk all the way to the bus stop. You've got to meet the bus stop at a, at a particular time and a place. And in many cities, that works great and is a great method of transportation. But for some folks in, in some communities, um, it doesn't work as great. And it doesn't get you exactly between the two points you need to go uh, where you're traveling and when you're traveling. Uh, and for folks, especially with, with limited mobility, sometimes it can create a, a challenge and, and sort of a, a transportation desert, as, as we call it. Um, and so really, with these kinds of on-demand uh, microtransit services, it's about can we sort of create what we call virtual bus stops? Could any corner in the town, in, in the service area, really become a bus stop? And so either you know through a smartphone app or through uh, a phone booking system, if that's your, your preference, could you just be able to call and get the bus you know, when and where you need it and take you where you need to go? Uh, and so that, in a nutshell, is is the technology and kind of what we're doing with this project. Uh, and I'm just going to share my screen for a second, just so we got some of the, the key details of the uh, service up that everybody can see. Um, this is always the anxious moment. Oh, there you go. You did it perfectly. OK, yes, you're right. you should get applause. Applause. For this. You did it. <laughs> this is big. I, I work for a tech startup. Hopefully I can share a screen. <laughs> we'll have her, we'll have her back. That, that makes you a, a regular guest on the show. Now we know you can do this. This is big. Yeah, well, if you can do a larger screen share on that, that would be great. If you can go to presentation mode in, there we go. Perfect. So our viewers, Frank and Mary, can really see that. There we go. Perfect. All right. Okay. Um, so, um, as you can see sort of on the on the right side, uh, we've got a map of the service zone. So we're servicing a number of key areas uh, within Westboro. We've got um, the T stations, we've got the high school, um, Northboro Crossing, um, Westboro Senior Center. So a lot of um, key hubs in the community. And with the service, you can book anywhere, you know, in the blue area from any point to any point uh, within that service zone. Um, and I think we'll start with the most kind of exciting piece of information is for the first month of service, all rides are free. <laughs> Can't get better than that. Um, so we really want folks to feel comfortable trying the service, testing it out, um, and really want that to be, you know, as, um, as smooth a, a process as possible. So um, folks can feel comfortable trying it out and uh, seeing how it works for them. Uh, after the first month, Fares are staying, you know, really, really, really uh, affordable and accessible for folks. Um, so rides are going to be $2 um, within the zone. And if you're riding to uh, the train station, only a dollar. So really helping to facilitate sort of that first last mile access and connect into the broader uh, public transit system of the region. Um, and like I said, you can book rides uh, anywhere within the zone to anywhere within the zone. So, um, you know, when you're booking through the smartphone app, it's as simple as just kind of typing in the address where you're getting picked up, press and set pick up, type in the address where you're getting dropped off, press set drop off and you're able to book. If you're booking through uh, the phone line, you would just give the address to the operator who'd be standing by and, and happy to book that ride for you. Um, and you can see here the, the phone number if you're gonna call to book a ride uh, is 508-388-6620. 
Uh, we've got really, really friendly uh, customer support agents who are standing by, who are happy to help anybody uh, book a ride. Um, we are being very sort of COVID uh, aware and, and sort of making sure that this is um, really safe service for people to uh, ride in, in sort of these uh, pandemic times. So um, the capacity of vehicles are, are limited to ensure that you can kind of maintain social distancing in the vehicle. Um, there's extensive training for drivers around um, cleaning and compliance. Um, we're, we're asking people to wear masks and obviously to, you know, if, if you're feeling sick and you suspect you may have COVID, uh, please don't ride. <laughs> and stay hours at home. <laughs> please stay home. <laughs> um, hours of the service, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday to Friday as well. So uh, hopefully get to you where you need to go. So um, thank you, Gabby. So lots of questions I've already received. So this, the service started yesterday formally right here in Westboro, right? So we kicked, kicked that off. Um, the vans, I don't know if you have a photo of those, um, but um, generally, um, if you do, that's great if we can pull them up. But they're white. They've got some red and blue. They look really sharp. They're new. They're clean. Um, the uh, This collaborative effort between WRTA and VIA has also enabled the service to include um, um, a, an ADA accessible van. Uh, so for folks that maybe have some mobility issues, um, uh, the ability to uh, get someone on safely who uses a rollator or a wheelchair is, is part of the service, which I think um, I, I know from my professional business in home care, um, that transportation for folks that um, have mobility issues is a real challenge. So um, the fact that this service is available in Westboro is extremely exciting and it's affordable because practically speaking, uh, a wheelchair assisted um, a ride could easily cost in the private sector, easily $40 an hour. And um, so when you think about the cost of this at, at $2 one way, it's, it's kind of a no brainer that you, know, you could take your loved one or you could go by yourself if you have that ability um, and, um, um, you know, go, go shopping at Northboro Crossing. So I'm um, very exciting. Um, can I ask you a couple yeah, of please. questions? Yeah, of course. Go, go. So this, so this sounds like, uh, this is all, this is wonderful. It's, it sounds like, like a cab, but you're using vans. So you're really, you're really taking people point to point within the zone. Right. So that my first question is, is so the, I'm assuming that the zone is what you just showed that map, which includes not only all of Westboro, but then some little extensions that go out to Southboro or to get to Northboro Crossing and stuff. That's that. That's all in the zone. That's and, right. And, I, and if I want to book that to take it to take a trip, how how much ahead of time do I need to book? It's on demand. So when you're ready to go, you book. I mean, I, you know, always I would say best practice is to leave a little extra wiggle room. You know, if you know you got to get to a doctor's appointment and you got to be there bang on, you know, you may want to just err on the side of caution. But um, again, it's it's really an on demand service. So, you know, a, a little bit more, you know, ahead of time when you're ready to leave, you just call up the phone line or you get out your app and you'll be able to book and request. And, you know, we'll tell you how long it's going to take the driver to, to reach you to pick you up. Um, yeah. But it, it gives you that kind of flexibility. And I think, you know, to your point, Shelby, about, you know, specifically access uh, for folks who need a wheelchair accessible vehicle. It's one of the things we've seen in a lot of services we operate around the world. You know, we also operate um, some paratransit services. And for a lot of folks, you know, the, these, you know, dial a ride services where you've got to book, you know, two days mm -hmm. in advance, it, it just doesn't give them the flexibility they need to be able to just, right. you know, go to the grocery store when you need to go to the grocery store. So it's something we're really excited about as well. Arthur, the other, the, the, Arthur, we also have four vehicles dispatched to uh, uh, serve the folks in Westboro for the 12 hours, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The prior service was one 12 passenger van that went from point A to point B, uh, no deviated service. So this is a tremendous expansion um, uh, uh, for service for, uh, the, for the Westboro community. Oh, it's huge. It's it, it just, it's huge. So uh, another, just to kind of a technical question, how do I pay? How do I pay? If I'm, if I'm booking online, do I, am I using a, 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 is there an app there through which I'm paying? And if I'm booking by phone, do I need to give a credit card? How, how, do, how do I pay? 
Yes, yeah, so you definitely we take all credit debit cards. So if you're using it through the app, you can just add it to your account. Uh, and if you're calling on the phone line, you can give the, the phone number um, to, through the dispatch system and they'll be able to add that to your account so you don't have to worry about it going forward. Dennis, actually, I'll, I'll defer to you on this one. I don't know if, if you can pay with cash as well when you get on board. I, I think the, if there was uh, uh, someone that wanted to do a cash payment uh, on the vehicle, uh, that would be allowed. But we think that's going to be a relatively minor number of folks uh, because when they book the ride, it, it'll be so. We, we've had some experience with online scheduling of paratransit rides in the yep. WIT area, er, WIT area, and out of 1,800 folks that are in that system with accounts, almost 95% pay with electronic media. So we think it's a fair gamble to say that most people are going to have some banking relationship or credit card that they can use to establish an account with VIA uh, to make this work. In addition, VIA is going to uh, uh, augment uh, some of the promotional things as we go along. Like if you ride on a regular basis, we may be able to get you other discounts or, or premium service or whatever. So, um, but again, uh, the idea is to get make this a uh, service that works for the residents of Westboro. This is transportation planning upside down. We're really focused on the rider and we are committed to provide the resources to make it work. Yeah, it sounds like just a very, very, reasonably priced Uber, you know, that you're really providing point to point on demand, it's instant. So, you know, I know that, you know, and I know that, you know, we've, we've had guests talking about, you know, the kind of the, 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 the general transit system. So does it, will this, will there also be some kind of a card that you could use? Is there like, I always think of the Charlie card, you know, when I think about stuff that goes into Boston, is there, is there some, or, or will every transaction be a separate transaction with, you know, either a credit card or a debit card? So certainly, I think within a number of our services, and I think this depends a little bit on on sort of where we see the the demand and sort of what folks want. Is you know, as Dennis mentioned, we we have the ability to do sort of um, we we call them via passes, but it is almost like a transit card where you sort of you know right. kind of prepay up front for a certain number of rides, and you've got them in your account, so you can just kind of use them as you go. Um, these are options that are easy for us to configure in the system if if that's you know what we're seeing that that folks kind of want to do and we think it's a, a a method that makes sense for for folks in the community yeah i hope via definitely considers that because i'm even thinking of you know frank and mary may have children that um want to kind of just preload an app and when you know maybe frank right. and mary aren't comfortable with the app but their daughter is so their daughter can say hey my mom needs to go from point to point whatever and i'll call her tell her where the pickup is going to be and it's going to be through my card or what have you. So this is just very exciting. I want to encourage folks um, just in the time that we have here. First of all, I want to thank Gabby and, and Dennis for their time. Um, I want to encourage folks, we'll make sure that number and the um, uh, is on the uh, screen and it will uh, show that uh, slide uh, again for sure. Um, call if you have questions. Um, the interesting part of the technology here is that the uh, zone has some flexibility. We've talked about that in other conversations offline with Dennis and, and Gabby. And so they're going to use that technology to continually look at, does the zone for Westboro align with kind of the initial footprint? So if they're finding that folks are, you know, calling, I'm making it up to go to, you know, just over the border into Northboro, some other place, then, you know, the, the system, if you will, is dynamic to, to uh, look at those possibilities. It's it's a great it's terrific it's just, and and I know that and I know Shelby um, you we had talked about the fact that for the for the end of the show you want to have it you before we end we want to have a few minutes to talk about some things that are happening with the selectmen but I'm yep. sure that the selectmen will be monitoring this too yep. just to, to be to be kind of seeing how this is playing out because you know and you've got a, you've got a wonderful kind of activist board you know yep. that can really be that's really trying to accommodate here yeah absolutely well, and you know last is, last night. Last night we talked at our meeting about the climate action plan. So this this aligns perfectly, as Dennis already said, with you know transportation goals and and uh, um, you know cutting down on kind of traffic and congestion and so on and so forth. So it's it's a sweet fit for Westboro, and we're so excited that uh, the WRTA pursued it and worked with Westboro as as uh, to bring it forward. Well, it's great. One yeah. of the one of the, the the last thing I'll say about this is, and the really exciting thing about Via is that. 
they're designing a transportation network for the town of Westboro, which has never been done for a community like this before. They will hopefully uh, be able to ramp up to the point where the vehicles are taking, picking up some people along the way, dropping them off, picking up other people, dropping them off, picking up other people. So the routes that these four vehicles, if you had a map of uh, Westboro for the 12 hours, will look like uh, spaghetti because <laughs> the vehicle will be tasked to where the where the riders are and where they need to go. And it's a continually operating system. It is the transit system of the future coupled right. up with the right e-commerce systems to to book and uh, pay for your fares and right. we're excited and we're very happy that we're doing this with uh via and uh with the town of westboro that's really exciting now shelby do you want yep. to, you just to the, stay on for the ending or do you want do you want to ask them if they want um, to leave yeah, you guys can stay on. I'm just going to give a quick update for the town. But again, thank you so much for the presentation. I know Frank and Mary are going to be excited to try it out. So thank yeah. you. Um, so just as we transition to the town uh, oriented uh, kind of uh, topics, um, next Tuesday, the 29th of September, we will have a special town meeting. It, there are three articles on the warrant. Um, one is a major purchase of uh, land at 31 to 33 Eli Whitney Street, known as the Day, Pay, Day Prey property. That's for open space and conservation. Um, there's a second article to provide supplemental funding for uh, self-sustaining breathing apparatus for the uh, fire department. They received grant money. So the uh, vote is to uh, allow for the full purchase and, and funding of that item. And then a minor kind of technical piece on the water treatment uh, plant RFP. There is a fall town meeting coming up. We'll talk at a separate meeting about that. Um, but again, Tuesday, 7 p.m., Westboro High School, please attend. Would love to see uh, a good turnout for, uh, for what will be a short meeting. You'll have plenty of time to get home to watch the debate, I promise. Um, and then next week on Frank and Mary, we're going to talk about um, Westboro Power Choice, which is the Community Aggregation Electricity Plan. We're going to talk about how folks can be green and save money, stabilize their electric bills. It's going to be a really important conversation for Frank and Mary to watch. Thank you, Shelby. Uh, thank you very much, Dennis and Gabby. These are great, great presentations. And we'll look forward to seeing you as these things, as this progresses. We're dying to see this thing continue to grow. Shelby, thank you for the for finding these folks and for your summary. Folks, we hope you enjoy these shows. As you know, we do these we do these twice a month because there are a lot of issues to be covered. Weekly. Weekly. I keep doing that. I keep doing that. <laughs> Weekly. So if you've got suggestions for shows, we want to know about those, right? Because there's room. There's room to talk about the things that you think are really important. So thank you for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you.